Good morning and welcome to Inside Oakwood with Dr. Leslie Pollard, where we're going to have another really, really important discussion and sharing some great information about women in STEM and mentoring. Good morning, Dr. Pollard. How are you today? Uh, good morning, Donna. I am doing well. It's a rainy day here in Huntsville, Alabama, but, uh, but, but it's a good day. You know, I, I heard one of the ministers say, I heard one of the ministers say, every day that I'm alive is a really good day. Yes. A rainy day is a good day. A sunshiny day is a good day. It doesn't matter if I'm alive. That's a really good day. So it's a good day today. Yes, it is. And even though, you know, we are prepared for whatever comes with this weather, but uh, we're going to take our smiles with us and uh, just like you said, just continue to have a great day today. All right. So we, we do have a wonderful topic to discuss today. It's called Best Practices for Mentoring Women and Minorities, Dr. Pollard. So what do you have to say about that to encourage oh, us? Oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm excited about this topic today. I'm just so excited. Uh, I, I was reading actually in my Bible before we came on the broadcast. Uh, I was actually reading Proverbs 31, and there is a portrait in Proverbs 31 of what I call a multifaceted femininity, a multifaceted femininity. People who say that the Bible is incorrigibly patriarchal haven't read all of it, because when you read Proverbs 31, what you get to see is that all of the industry, the business acumen, the negotiation skills, and all of the cognitive ability that goes into this multifaceted and God-approved femininity is something that is striking and that story needs to be told more. Mm -hmm. So this morning, we have a panel that can help us tell that story. Um, so that's what we're looking forward to today as we talk about women in STEM. In STEM. Um, the history of science has, then, has been that it has been a male enclave until recently, mm -hmm. until recently. And the other question becomes, once it was a male enclave, the question would be, how did it open up? Why did it open up? And how can we open it up even more? So I'm really, really excited about what we're going to talk about this morning. I think this is a great topic. And, and may, I, may I launch a first question, Donna? Yeah. Please so here, here's the first question to all the panelists, and each one can, can have the opportunity, of course, to, uh, to identify themselves before they speak. So ladies, I want to ask you a question. Uh, now, some have heard the question before, but, but the question is based on a story. So but we, we get on an airplane, a Delta flight, and I'm with my granddaughter, Genesis. At the time, Genesis was about four. Now, you've got to understand, just for the purposes of the story, the background, right? So Genesis walks in the plane. I say, oh, Genesis, look, you know, they had the, in those days, they had the pilot, you know, they had the, the door open. You could see the pilots and all that kind of thing. Two gentlemen were there and they were flying the plane. I say, Genesis, you could be a pilot one day. And she said, no, daddy, pilots, that's, that's for boys. <laughs> that's what she said. I said, and now, you know, okay, so just for, just for context, right? So a lot of my friends are on here. So you understand exactly what I'm trying to say. Okay, so, so Genesis's mother is an attorney at NASA. Genesis's aunt, Karen, is a pharmacist at Huntsville Women and Children's Hospital. Her grandmother, Prudence, is a PhD in evaluation, measurement, and research design, and a dietitian. So like, where did my granddaughter get this idea? And let me just wrap the story up quickly. The pilot heard that as we were walking in, the pilot, I didn't know the pilot was listening. I thought they were going through their checkoffs. Great. The pilot called her into the cockpit, sat her down, mm -hmm. took off his hat and put it on her and said, you can be a pilot because there are lots of lady pilots who fly for our company. And we took a picture of her. I, I still have the picture. Wow. I said, no, you can be a pilot too, right? Ladies, where did she get that kind of idea from? And where does the idea come from often for girls uh, Lisa, who say, well, that's math is not for girls, that's for boys, or where does that come from? Where does that come from? Dr. Pollard, unfortunately, it comes from the fact that she's saying what she sees. Yeah. That's all, yeah. you know, unfortunately, yeah. the number of women, while, you know, it's increasing in a lot of areas, the number of women who are represented in those areas it's still very, very small. And so yeah. she's just saying what she sees. She said what she saw. Wow. So that means then that 
role modeling is really crucial, right? So if, if children say what they see, then it means we need to help them see more. Amen? Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. That, that's what we do. Dr. Lisa James, thank you. I'm sorry I called you Lisa, but Dr. Lisa James, yes. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and I'm sure Donna's got a whole bevy of questions, but that's a great pivot point for us to launch the, the conversation about about the grant and and Karen, Dr. Karen Ben Marshall, why we why tell us about the grant that is trying to change what I want to say little girls, but little boys too. And 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 here's why I say little boys because it educates them too. You know what I mean? It it edu it does something to them too. But but Karen, tell us, Dr. Karen Ben Marshall, tell us about the grant, please. Yep. Dr. Pollack, good morning, everyone. I good think morning. Dr. Natalie King wanted to answer your question, your first question, oh, Dr. I'm sorry. Pollack, I saw her trying to get something in, and then I'll tell you about the grant. <laughs> I, I think she wanted to say something. Sorry, That's Dr. amazing. Natalie. That's sorry. amazing you caught that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I was just agreeing with Dr. James. I, I think there's a level of, you know, you, you go after what you see, but then also if you take it even from the neuroscience perspective, it's just a sense of do young women feel a sense of belonging or identity in these spaces, right? So there's a, there's a level of being able to role model it. I think nowadays we see more people that look like us and we have women who are great mentors and, and role models, but it's a matter of do, do those kids really feel like I have the capacity to do that too, you know? So there's a little bit of an extra step that I think we have to do and not just assume that because they see us doing things that they also see themselves doing that very same thing. Mm -hmm. Good point. Good point. Well, that's a powerful point. I, I recall during the days now, this is going to go back before some of our time, but I remember during the case, days of the Cosby show, mm -hmm. and I remember working in Los Angeles and meeting kids who said to me, they called the Cosbys white people, black white people. Mm -hmm. I said, well, why? What? What? Why? Why? It's because I don't know any black people like that. Wow. Right? Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Dr. Karen Ben Marshall, tell us about how we're trying to change this through our advance grant. Yeah, that that that's so important, Dr. Pollan. And, and, and you know, Oakwood University has always been trying to be at the forefront of making a difference for women, minorities, you know, and I don't even like to use the word minorities. I'm people of color, I prefer to say. Mm -hmm. Um, and I really think that it's so critical, but along with, with our journey, we have also been blessed to get funding from the National Science Foundation to really balance this, you know, do, do something about this equity, you know, for women and, and minorities um, and equity. And so there's a grant um, that's called the Advance Grant. Um, and so we're part of that um, with um, the Alabama Network. So mm -hmm. our primary lead on this is the University of Alabama in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. which is a primar primarily white institution. We also are partnering with the University of Alabama in Huntsville, also a primarily white institution. Mm -hmm. um, also Alabama A&M, Miles College and Oakwood. We're all part of this network. So there are about five institutions really trying to build on this conversation about how do we achieve gender equity um, in, mm -hmm. in STEM, in STEM. Amen. And, and there is still, even though it's getting better and we have these types of programs and grants available, there's still a gender gap, gap in this area of STEM. So Dr. Elaine Evangelical, could you, could you share with us any information and, and, uh, about this gender gap and kind of add to that discussion we're having? Oh yes, I would love to. So just to start out, just in the field of STEM, for the longest time, STEM was dominated by the male. Um, like even when I was in grad school, most of the mentors were males. Um, when I went to the research conferences, a lot of those that were um, keynote speakers, those that were you know, presenting, they were males. But what looked really good was we saw a lot of females in the training, right, moving up. So this is important, that gap is huge. Only 28% of the workforce in STEM is actually women, that's really low. And if you look at sciences, like, you know, it's, 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 it's bad, right? So um, it's important, this is why when we have the advanced grants and opportunities like this, it will provide the mentorship, it will provide the leadership and the guidance that's needed to train it. Like my younger daughters, you know, they're looking at me 
right? They're looking at those around them. And it's because they're seeing us as mentors, you know, they want to go into that field as well. And I think in the future, we will be happy to see an increase. And it's because of efforts like this that we have now that will, will really pave that way for these young women coming up, just like Genesis. And you know, she's a little bubbly young lady. And every time I went into the child development lab, she'll run and hug me. And she's like, hi, Dr. Vantapool. And just for her to say, Dr. Vantapool, you know, you know, when I was younger, we didn't see a lot of doctor women. Right, right. So just to see that is, is, is amazing. Well, let's talk about this mentorship uh, and, and how important it is. And hear from Dr. Natalie King again, because you were the youngest to graduate in both your undergraduate and graduate studies. Uh, what prepared you to reach such a lofty goal so young? Oh my gosh, you know, I really wish I could take the credit for that, but I actually have to put it all on my parents. Mm -hmm. um, I come from a very Caribbean household. And uh, if you know anything about Caribbean households, it's, it's, a, it's a staple <laughs> of our journey. There is no <laughs> if, it's just when and what are you going to do? <laughs> and so um, I have to really put it back on my foundation as far as my parents and my sister, who is also in STEM, Sharon, Chantel King. Um, she, you know, she was also a, a very close guide, right? Like I saw her doing things and it made me want to also do things just like her. And so I think, you know, this idea of having a goal, I mean, yes, some of it is self-directed, but I think as we've all been saying here before, being able to see other people that look like you and maybe even sometimes don't look like you, but just seeing other people, whether we're talking about cross-gender, who, um, who are doing amazing things in, in their careers, I think having that exposure early is, um, is just really, really big. Because like I said, you start to build that identity to that space, you start to build that sort of belonging. And I think I did that very, very early from the household and then going to Oakwood. Oakwood was, I mean, I, I have to credit everything that I've done to Oakwood, you know, all the mentors and everything. You'll hear it a little bit in my talk later, just listing out some of those mentors, but I, I have to give it all back to Oakwood in that sense. And I want you to share with us about your mentorship uh, journey and who they were and how they uh, helped you in different ways. What were your greatest takeaways from the mentorship that you have received? But first of all, before we get to that, we're going to get to that right after you explain your title, because you got a heavy, heavy title. <laughs> and talk about that and tell us exactly what that means that you do. Certainly. So I am a medical science liaison. I work with uh, I work within a, a large global healthcare organization, and um, I'm primarily focused in the neuroscience division. So, long, long story short, I actually cover four medical uh, cover four states and handle our medical strategy for those four states. So that's Iowa, Kansas, Nebraska, and here in Missouri. Um, when it comes to medical strategy, we're talking things around clinical trials. We're talking um, activities around educating neurologists on therapies that are currently coming to the forefront for our particular therapeutic area. And so there's a lot of education involved in it. There's a lot of um, traveling, not so much right now during the pandemic, um, but you know, I pretty much have a list of, um, I don't know, 40 to 50 neurologists that I educate in terms of um, just new therapies and, and, and how to properly manage patient care. Um, in addition to that, I actually serve on a couple of other, as you mentioned, councils within the, the, within the division itself. And last year around, not quite this time, but of course, when everything happened with George Floyd, there was a lot of discussion internally around how to really see and, and, and build equity within our own organization. And so a lot of councils, DNI councils were formed and I was nominated at that time. So I do work with our diversity and inclusion group. We provide tools, you know, outward facing tools as well as internal training to make sure that diversity and inclusion is important and is kind of always at the forefront of everything we do with the business. Um, so that's my main title. I'm also a CEO, I just founded a business here in St. Louis, it's, it's for uh, women with text, women and men with textured hair. So it's a hair care business, um, and so I, I've been making products and whipping up products here in my kitchen. <laughs> so a little bit of everything. <laughs> Uh, so you you have some broad experience and talents as well. So, but tell us who your mentors were and how they specifically impacted your life. 
Yeah, I would say the biggest thing to remember about mentorship too is just that it never stops, right? You know, I think at every stage you 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 get more mentors and you have more access to different things and different people. And at the same time, you're reaching back as well. So it's, a, it's kind of this network approach and you'll hear a little bit about, about that later too. Um, but my mentors at Oakwood were, I mean, the list is long, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Dr. You Paul know. and Dr. Yeah. Rand. And yeah, there's so many people in the biology department from Dr. Pollard as well, just, you know, being able to interact with our leadership at Oakwood, you know, whether you're a freshman or a senior, things like that matter, you know? and um, biology department, chemistry department, Dr. Lahane was, was huge to my journey. I, I was one of those students who felt the need to save organic chemistry and physics to senior year, which is such a bad idea. And uh, <laughs> he helped us get through it, you know? And so I have a lot of mentors to really thank right there at Oakwood. And I, I think I'd be here for the rest of the hour if I were to list them all. Well, anything that any of them said that really stuck with you, what was that? You know, because sometimes people say certain things to you and they don't realize what the impact is on you, but you never forget it. And it's like the thing that drives you. Do you have anything like that? I would say there are two pivotal moments for me at Oakwood. And, and like I said, there's been many mentors. And I think along that time, they, they've said many things. Um, but there were two key moments where I think actually pivoted me towards where I am now. And so that that would be the first year coming in as a freshman. I think most freshmen, they come in and they're like, well, I kind of want to do this. I'm interested in that. And they're kind of all over the place. And it wasn't until Dr. Paul sat me down and said, I really think you should try biology. You know, like, I think this is something that would be interesting for you. And I, up until that point, you know, I'd, I'd had some interest in science, but I'd never really saw myself there, you know? And so that was key to me even trying it out and even, you know, considering it as something that I could do. And then the next point was really after I finished the degree itself. I think when you finish, and you'll hear this a little bit later in the talk as well, there's these three phases I think that are really important to most students going into STEM. They're the kind of points in time where you could either choose to persist or not persist, right? And one of those key points is really after you finish the degree, are you going to now work in STEM? Are you going to go on and go to grad school or med school or whatever? And, you know, Dr. Rand and Dr. Gula were very instrumental in my journey to finishing that because I hadn't even applied to grad school. <laughs> but it, like for the end of my senior year, I was like, well, I think I'll figure it out. And I was going into fashion. I was going into modeling as someone had mentioned earlier. I was doing all kinds of things, y'all. And so just being able to have someone like Dr. Rand and Dr. Gula really set me down and think about where I could go next was very, very pivotal for me. So it wasn't necessarily something they said. It, it was more so what they did and kind of how they they helped to guide the next steps of the journey. But just hearing you talk about someone, Dr. Paul, just suggesting it to you when you hadn't even thought about it. And then you take that journey and you take it to look at you now. It's amazing. Crazy. So what, what do you do to encourage other young women to do the same? I mean, because obviously Dr. Paul saw something in you. So in your career, I'm sure you're seeing things in other young people. So how do, how do you actually do the same and pay it forward? Yeah, I think everywhere that I've been, I've always tried to, so there's a level of structured and formal mentoring. And then there's a, the other uh, sort of, um, you know, I, just, I, I may give you a call or I, just something very informal. And I think both are important for um, kids to realize it doesn't always have to be this structured thing. And so whenever I move to a location or if I go um, move for a new job or a new role, I try to think about what organizations are in my area that I could either be a part of formally or consider, you know, maybe going and speaking to schools, you know, trying to really, I think, increase the level of exposure. Because like we've all mentioned before, if they don't really see it, they don't really know that it's something that they can do or be. And so between speaking and, you know, I don't get a chance to do as much of it as I want anymore, but, you know, every now and then I do have to find time to make sure that I'm speaking to an elementary school or a high school um, for women and for girls and boys, you know. Um, but then also one of the main organizations that I really support here in St. Louis is called Black Girls to STEM. And it's founded by an amazing chemist. She's a Black woman herself. And she's just so passionate about really, you know, introducing young people specifically young women to the sciences and getting them exposed early because I think the earlier you can do that the, the, the likelier the likely there's a likelihood I'm sorry the increased likelihood that they'll continue and, and become interested later on so um just I just don't think it's important I don't think it's a good idea that it's 
assume that people know, you know, that these kids know it, it's everywhere for sure, but that doesn't mean they know that it's something they can do. So anyway, I can try to increase that exposure and let them know there is no ceiling, you know, there's, there's no ceiling, there's no, we need more, you know, there's room. <laughs> um, any way I can do that is, is kind of how I, I like to do that. Now, Dr. King, you are going to be our guest speaker for today's virtual event at 11 a.m. And it is entitled Best Practices for Mentoring Women and Minorities. We're going to get uh, someone from Oakland University to give us more details about that. But could you just give us a little taste of what you're going to be sharing as far as what those best pra practices are as a mentor? It's interesting because I've been sprinkling them here on here, yeah, you know, yeah. throughout for the, the, the full morning. But uh you know, I understand the audience will be a little bit mixed. And so I'm trying to make sure that I'm appealing to um, all who will be in the audience. So there'll be a few that are kind of focused on the students and kind of how to think about mentorship. Um, and then there'll be a couple that'll be more focused on faculty and how to really consider, you know, organizing their programs and, and thinking about the long-term strategy. Um, but I think at the end of the day, uh, one of the biggest points that I plan to make later is just this idea about being real and authentic. Um, you know, many of these students really see and understand to some degree that, you know, STEM can be hard. You know, it's, it's not an easy playground to be in sometimes, especially as a woman, especially as a person of color. Um, and so I think being real and authentic with these kids is, is one great place to start, right? You know, letting them know it's okay to um, see themselves in different spaces and fail and fail early and pick yourself back up. Those types of things, I, I really want to make sure that people are, are understanding and really implementing it into any mentorship program that they have. We are really looking forward to hearing your presentation today. Uh, so Dr. James, that's a great segue into uh, you telling us more about what's happening in the department and the event that's coming up this morning, the virtual event at 11. Dr. James. Absolutely. I enjoyed listening to Dr. King's comments. And I'm just excited, before I tell you a little bit more about what's going on in our department and the event this afternoon, we have been ranked number 12 for best bachelor's in mathematics degree programs in 2021 awesome. at study.com. Mm. Study.com's mission is to make education accessible to all students and over 40 million viewers visit their site every month. So this is huge for us. And in the Department of Mathematics and Computer Science, we've been really, really working hard as far as our mathematics degree programs, because we recognized a need. We recognize some of the um, concerns that Dr. King mentioned, the fact that, well, what do you do with a mathematics degree? You know, we have a lot of students who are talented and have an interest in pursuing mathematics, but it's not like if you pursue engineering, you know you're going to be an engineer. If you pursue accounting, you know you're going to be an accountant. So what we've done is we've made a lot of adjustments to our program, our degree programs, mathematics degree programs, so that our students will be able to see that there's so many opportunities, career opportunities for students who pursue um, degrees in mathematics. But to talk to you about our event this afternoon, we received a grant in 2020, we received a grant from the US Department of Education called, it's the Minority Science and Engineering Improvement Program Grant, MISIP. And we're focusing on creating opportunities for students in STEM, which we've called CROSS. So when you see the words or MISIP CROSS, that is what's happening in the Department of Mathematics and Computer Science. And this afternoon at four o'clock central time, we have a program called Win for STEM Symposium. And please, if you know of any high school, female high school juniors or seniors who are interested in STEM or who may not be interested in STEM and they just you know, want to explore that as an option, please tell them to register before four o'clock okay. by emailing winforstem 
at Oakwood University, at oakwood.edu. Let me say that again, win for STEM at oakwood.edu. This event is going to be awesome. Professor Shoshana Smith was the coordinator of this event. And our keynotes, the theme of the event is a woman's guide to a successful STEM career. Mm. Our keynote speaker is going to be Dr. Nehemiah Mabry, and he, he's going to talk about the difference is you. And we're going to have a panel discussion with beautiful women um, who are making significant contributions in the area of STEM. Dr. Melissa Richardson, she's a professor in the Department of Biological Sciences. She's going to be the moderator for the panel. We have two Oakwood alums. We have Dr. Samantha Brumfield. She's an epidemiologist, but she got a degree in mathematics from Oakwood University. And we have Danielle Lewis, who is working as an engineer. She was, she's a product of our dual degree program that we have. Last but not least, we have Ashley LeBlanc, who is a chemist. And she's doing some exciting things in one of the branches of our government. And so we just want you guys to spread the word, win for STEM at oakwood.edu and get these female junior and seniors to come on out. Wonderful. Now let's go to Dr. Karen Ben Marshall because we do have an event that's coming up before yours uh, at 11 a.m. And we want to make sure we uh, inform everybody about that so you can come on this virtual event. Dr. Ben Marshall, could you tell us about it? Thank you so much. So Donna, you know you started us off with this month in, in March the 8th and we just started our events for um, that sure. um, celebrated around STEM, specifically through the Alabama Advance. And so Dr. Natalie King is gonna be our keynote speaker today at 11 o'clock. You can see us on Facebook or on Oakwood's YouTube channel. Thanks, thank you, Audrey, for putting that up there for us. And so this is, so, we're just really excited. And so of course it is a virtual event. And so Dr. King will do her um, presentation as a guest speaker. We have four panelists. Um, the moderator will be Kim Anderson. These are all Oakwood alum, which is really exciting. Um, Dr. Sonia Ben, who's an oncologist hematologist. Dr. Antoine Reed, who is a medical director of, um, of ma um, microbiology and immunology. And Brianna Scott, a project engineer. So what we try to do is actually have individuals from our various departments, STEM departments, so Dr. King, graduate of the biology department, Dr. Sonia Ben, graduate of the chemistry department, Dr. Antoine Reed, graduate of the biology department, and Brianna Scott, who is a graduate of the um, mathematics and computer science department. And so we are so excited about this event and please, please join us. So we'll have the keynote, then we'll have the, our panelists also talk with, with our moderator today. So really, really excited about that event. This, this will be streaming live on our Facebook page, Oakland University's Facebook page, and where else can we find it today at 11? Um, YouTube. YouTube. All right, Dr. Pollard, it's time for you to wrap it up. This is really this, a fantastic isn't this, conversation. Isn't this exciting, Donna? I mean, yes, it's just it amazing. I, I remember Audrey and I were talking about how we were going to approach Women's History Month. And, and Audrey said, which program would you like for the first week? And I said, well, and then we picked the program. And I said, but let's try something different. Let's just do the whole month. And each that. week, each week, it has gotten better and better and better and better. And we've learned more and more. And also, uh, Dr. James, I was going to save it until the end, but you you, you said it. Uh, Study.com studied hundreds. I want to congratulate you. Study.com studied hundreds, everyone. We've got to get the frame right. Hundreds of math programs. And determined that after looking at the placement of our graduates from Oakwood University, that among hundreds of math programs, Oakwood is ranked number 12. Mm -hmm. That is an amazing accomplishment. And HBCU, I'm going to spread the word everywhere that I go. So colleagues, thank you so very much for what you're doing. The way you are game changers in the area of STEM, you're making a tremendous difference. And thank you for carrying the banner of your alma mater so proudly. Thank you so very much. And may God bless you in the work that you're doing. Thank you so much, Dr. Pollard. And we thank all of you for being with us today and visiting us for Inside Oakwood with Dr. Pollard. Join us again on Monday for another edition when we'll share more information, but about the virtual alumni weekend 2021. That's coming up next week. Thank you guys. Have a great day.